we can dismiss many of these defenders of slavery as self-justifying hypocrites. Not all of them. In 1742, a book in defense of slavery by Jacobus Capitain, a newly ordained minister in the Dutch Reformed Church, became a bestseller. It ran through five editions within a year. And the, the book's argument is eloquent enough, but its real selling point was its author's story. Because Capitain was African by birth. He'd been enslaved himself as a child before being freed and sent to the Netherlands for education. And his ambition was to take the Protestant gospel back to his native land as a missionary. He's the first black African ever to be ordained a Protestant minister. And he represented everything that Europe's Protestant establishments hoped for from their empires. The light of Christendom spreading into heathen darkness. In 1742, the same year as his book, he's sent to the Dutch trading post of Elmina in modern Ghana. Of the 240 other employees of the Dutch West India Company stationed there, only the governor had a higher salary than he did. And the Netherlands cheered him on his way. The, the poem here published to celebrate his mission, um, written by a friend of his, says, his skin is black, but his soul is white. With him, the Africans once whitened will always honor the lamb. I, I, it was kindly meant. In reality, he found himself isolated in Elmina, resented by most of his colleagues, without meaningful support from the church that had ordained him back in Amsterdam, stymied in his attempts to build links with the local population. He tried to resign, but was forbidden, so he forged on. He created a school, only to die in 1747, aged only 30. His school died with him. The experiment had failed, and the Dutch ordained no more Africans. But why did he defend slavery? Well, the argument of his book is, is pretty routine. He argues that the Protestant gospel of Christian freedom means spiritual rather than bodily freedom. But what I think is noteworthy is why he chose to make this argument. He insisted that his book arose from his determination to preach the gospel to the unconverted. But, as he wrote, some Christians fear that the preaching of the Protestant gospel might lead to slavery disappearing entirely from those colonies which Christians own. And so, not wishing to jeopardize their slave holdings, the colonists oppose the preaching of the gospel. Therefore, if he could reassure slaveholders that they truly did own men's and women's bodies, maybe the preachers would be given a chance to save their souls. 